Canto 2 Day was departing, and the darkening air called all earth's creatures to their evening quiet, while I alone was preparing as though for war, to struggle with my journey and with the spirit of pity, uh, which flawless memory will redraw. O muses, O genius of art, O memory whose merit has inscribed inwardly those things I saw, help me fulfill the perfection of your nature. I commenced, Poet, take my measure now. Appraise my powers before you trust me to venture through the deep passage where you would be my guide. You write of the journey of Silvius's father, made to immortal realms, although he stayed a mortal witness in his corruptible body, that the opponent of all evil bestowed such favor on him befits him, chosen for glory, by highest heaven to be the father of Rome, and of Rome's empire, later established holy, seat of great Peter's heir, you say he came to that immortal world, and things he learned there led to the papal mantle, and triumphed for him. Later the chosen vessel too went, and returned, carrying confirmation of that faith, which opens the way with salvation at its end. But I, what cause, what f whose favor could send me forth on such a voyage? I am no Aeneas or Paul, no, not I nor others think me of such worth. And therefore I have my fears of playing the fool to embark on such a venture. You are wise. You know my meaning better than I can tell. And then, like one who unchooses his own choice, and thinking again undoes what he has started, so I became a nullifying unease, overcame my soul on that dark slope, and voided the undertaking I had so quickly embraced. If I understand, this generous shade retorted, Cowardice grips your spirit, which can twist a man away from the noblest enterprise, as a trick of vision startles a shying beast. To ease your burden of fear, I will disclose why I came here, and what I heard that compelled me first to feel, uh, feel compassion for you. It was a lady's voice that called me where I dwelled in limbo. A lady so blessed and fairly featured, I prayed her to command me. Her eyes outjeweled the stars in splendor. O oh, generous Mantuan spirit, she began, in a soft voice of angelic sound, whose fame lives still, that the world will still inherit, as long as the world itself shall live. My friend, no friend of fortune, has found his way impeded on the barren slope, and fear has turned him round. I think he may all be already lost, unaided, so far astray, I've come from heaven too late. Go now with your fair speech and what is needed to save him. Offer the help you have to give before he is lost, and I will be consoled. I am Beatrice, come from where I crave to be again. Who ask this, as love has willed, so have I spoken. And when I return before my Lord, he will hear your praises told. Then she was silent, and I in turn began, O Lady of Goodness, through whom alone mankind exceeds what the sky's least circle can contain with its, within its compass. So sweet is your command, had I already obeyed it, would feel too late. But tell me how you so fearlessly descend to such a center from that encompassing state you long to see again. You yearn for the answer deeply, she said. So I will tell you in short. How can I come to limbo, yet feel no terror? Fear befits things with power for injury, not things that lack such power. God the Creator has by his mercy made me such that I cannot feel what you suffer. None of this fire assails me. In heaven a lady feels such pity for this impediment where I send you. Severe judgment is broken by her grace on high. To Lucy she said, your faithful follower needs you. I command him. I commend him to you. Lucy, the foe of every cruelty, found me where I sat with Rachel of old and urged me, Beatrice, true glory of God, can you not come to the aid of one who had such love for you he rose above the common crowd? Do you not heed the pity of his cries? And do your eyes not see death near him? In a flood, the ocean itself can boast no power to surpass. 
Never on earth was anyone spurred to motion so quickly, to seize advantage or fly from danger, as at these words I hurried here from heaven, trusting your eloquence, whose gift brings honor both to yourself and to all those who listen. Having said this, she turned toward me the splendor of her eyes, loosened with tears, which made me hasten to save you, even more eagerly than before. And so I rescued you on the fair mountain, where the beast blocked the short way up. Therefore, what is this? Why, why should you hold back? Why be a coward, rather than bolder, freer? Since in the court of heaven, for your sake, three blessed ladies watch, and words of mine have promised a good as great as you might seek. As flowers bent and shrunken by night at dawn, unfold and straighten on their stems to wake brightened by sunlight, so I grew strong again. Good courage coursing through my heart, I spoke like one set free. How full of true compassion was she who helped me! How courteous and quick were you to follow her bidding! And your narration has restored my spirit. Now on, for I feel eager to go with you and cleave to my first intention. From now, we two will share one will together. You are my teacher, my master, and my guide. So I spoke, and when he moved, I followed after, and entered on that deep and savage road.